All right, rebound day today, day two, moving day. We need to make up some ground. We're in like 39th place. We need to make up like three, four pounds. Shooting for like 17 today. George is excited, he's ready to go get them. We got good attitudes. Hopefully the fish cooperate. Uh, all new water day, we're going down to pool five and hopefully catch a nice mixed bag and make something happen. Right there is what it looks like when you are on a sandbar. You can't park there. Good times on the river. Good one? That or no? Like short? Yep. Doesn't look too bad. That'd be a keeper anyways. A green one? What the? What are you doing here? <laughs> Thanks. These are actually pretty small, but eh, should be a keeper though. A ratty one maybe. Let's see. I have not caught one of these here. I haven't like tried to fish it much though. Uno, uno. That's weird. Both times I stopped here in practice, they ended up pushing bait. Like you'd see the smallies like this. Both back in. Fish. <laughs> Treble hooks. Oh, that's a decent one. Thank you. Number two, Vixen. Right on that red hook. Number two. Fish. Oh, I came off. Another one came back, got it. Has it floated up. That's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Brown town. There you go. Do you need a top water or anything? Or? I got a frog on. I had one blow up okay. back here, but I do have two. Fish. A little better. A better splash. Anyways. Stay down. Nobody wins when you jump. Bad one. If that was a small one today, maybe we could get going. He actually ate it. There was no risk of him coming off. Sure glad I didn't start here yesterday. Four. See one bust out there? Or?
But when they get going, they will start. Like, we had them blowing up behind the boat over there. Hopefully they start to, like... There's one on the flute. Another green one. It's five? <laughs> we might catch some fish today. Quick time check. A few minutes after eight, we launched at seven with a lock. We got a limit already. Yesterday I took till 10.30, so already a better start. This is too boring. Oh, once just swiped it. I got him. He's small. Oh, he might be better than that one, but... Ah! Let's see if anybody's up there playing. They actually moved back that time. Fell out of our eddy. Oh, that's... No, that was like a pike. That was... Actually, this guy might be more likely to be able to help him than us. Probably the pontoon, you can probably get a lot closer to it. This one up there. Oh, I didn't see it. I turned away. Feels, geez, feels pretty good. I feel like it's got me around a piece of wood. I didn't even realize there was anything for him to like get around. He's still on there. There he goes. Oh, yeah. Ooh, nice one. Nice. Thank you. Just sound down. I'm gonna get off the point here. There's a brown one. Yep, there they go. They're starting to. <laughs> Gee, he was actually hooked pretty darn good, even though he wasn't hooked in the mouth. That's a good upgrade. There's our upgrade. The keeper at least, I think. Should be. Looked like it. Oh, crap. That line's... Oh, jeez. There you go. That'll be on the board. Do you have any rope or anything? What? Do you have any rope or anything? These guys are stuck on a sandbar. Do you want to see if you can go around and see if you can help them or? Appreciate it. They're stopping over. I already had to shove my, uh, one of my teammates off the sandbar. He got himself kind of in that same situation. Not quite that bad. Yeah, just knowing where you can run, I feel like the river rats have such an advantage that way. You know how it is. You can't park there. <laughs> well, close. All right, the sandbar rescue is about to begin, and I want to address a couple things. Why am I showing this? Well, I'm not trying to make an example of anybody or embarrass anybody, but I just want to show what can happen. When you're fishing the river, and I know I've shown up like running around in my videos in shallow water, like this is the, the downside if you make a mistake. I know they knew where they were going. Uh, they just made a lapse in judgment 
went down one two sh shoot upstream uh, miscalculated and end up on the sandbar they're actually pretty lucky there was some rocks there that they miss uh, but so the reason I didn't come over right away was because based on my experience what I could see of their boat there was no way that four of us were gonna move that boat so that's why I chose to fish close by them and not leave my spot right away and just basically wait till the cavalry arrived and that's why I waved those kids down in their John boat because we needed more bodies and we needed more boats to move them off the sandbar. In the end, that little John boat didn't really move the needle. Uh, thanks for those guys for trying. That was awesome that they stopped by. They didn't have to. Uh, my Uncle Marty finally got there. Another boat. Uh, several boats showed up. We basically had like seven or eight people fishing and pushing in the water and Marty pulling with his boat. And after a couple attempts and cleaning out the sand from his intake and restarting, we basically got them free into some water where they could get the trolling motor down and start fishing again. Uh, so thanks to everybody that came. That was super awesome that we all worked together, got them off sandbar. Uh, and then uh, I let them come in and fish my starting area once I left. Um, they got a few fish. Uh, John almost made the divisional team. He, he had a fish <laughs> hit his top water late in the day that he missed or it missed him. It didn't work out, but uh, everybody's safe. I think it only was like less than $100 for the get the boat fixed, get the sand cleared out and that kind of stuff. So it really was a super fortunate outcome. Uh, everything worked out and uh, we got back to fishing. We lost maybe, I don't know, 45 minutes of fishing. But hey, we got them off sandbar, they were safe, nobody was hurt, the boat, motor are in good shape. So, I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the video, we're going to get back to some catching the bass. Time check, 9 o'clock, 9.15. We spent, I don't know, half an hour pushing with a whole bunch of people. So thanks everybody that came and pushed. Uh, they're free. We're going to get back to fishing. And if they need help getting back to the lock later, we'll make sure we do that. I think the biggest of the small ones we have. Yeah. Jumping out, you using like a vixen or something? Yeah, old school vixen. What's that one? No, Berkeley Jaywalker. <laughs> Justin Lucas says they're awesome. I catch stuff on them sometimes, but they're mostly cheap, is why I get them.
Mexican, the, the Vixen def oh. definitely sounds different. It definitely has a different sound to it. I pretty much throw a Vixen and a Yellow Magic and a Shower Blow. I had, we had some fish last year, I was helping Bill. We got those in front of us in the lock to practice for probably a lake tournament. We had some pin minnow eaters right below the lake and we had to throw really tiny shit to get them. Dang. I can't tell. That's kind of brown. Brown? Not like a ton of them. Oh, he's staying down. I'm sure glad I didn't come here yesterday. <laughs> Ooh, that's definitely, a good one. definitely looks brown. That's a good one. <laughs> He appears that he's hooked well. I think he might actually got a second hook on that jump. That was a terrible no, job. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> we got a nice brown town upgrade. That was a good fish. It's pretty safe to say I regret my decision making yesterday <laughs> and my spot selection. Yeah, I mean, you catch bunch more of them, you might be in it. Just go frogging in Robinson and try to catch a 3-4 pound and like... Oh, that's a good one. I was really thinking, oh, maybe I better pick up the Carolina rig. Oh, you son of a gun. He did not miss it that time. No. Third time's a charm, I guess. You got the net for him? Or... Probably. That's actually a pretty decent size pike. I think yeah, there's more than one pike here because that's not the one that jumped over my bait earlier. Uh, that one... I think the one was pretty similar. That might be the one that hit yours, but that's not. Oh, now he's hooked in the tail, too. Fantastic. Nice. <laughs> good one? Might be. Looks pretty good. Spot change! Maybe I had some swim towards. Looked decent. Nope. nope. This is coming towards me. No way, bro. <laughs> Dixon, free the world for the win. Look at you, you're just like a regular river rat, fishing sand drops. Yeah. I don't even know you anymore. It's like barely a spinning rod on your deck. All right. We'll see you around. Two. Got him. That is actually smaller than the ones I saw, but not by much. Okay, they need to both from that out, I guess. Like he lost them, or? He lost like five fish that were little ones. Fish? Good one? There you go. Good All one. Right. Double my bag size. Let's go. Yeah, normally I don't fish this big of a tube, but it seems like if I fish anything smaller, all I'm getting is 12 inches. So I went to a 4 inch. That's the major comment about what you actually got today so far. Besides but I, yeah, no, I know, I know, but imagine. <laughs> Not bad, not bad. Most of them are I got you, bud. I got you, bud.
Look at long and skinny. Stinky is like Stinky four pounds. That's not bad. He'll call. He'll call. The old C rig. Ball and chain. Anything to help the cause, huh? Yeah. I, I don't matter the conditions, sun, rain, shine, wind, cold, warm. Once the water gets like, once they get past the spawn, I will never go on the river without one of the two or both. I mean, the popper is probably more versatile, more year round, like all the time. As the year goes on, the walking baits get better. I mean, a lot of people like super spooks and sexy dogs and... But dude, I've had what we've had today happen so many times I don't throw anything else. Like, outside of a shower bowl. That's the one other bait that I'll throw. Don't be afraid to mix it up and just drop it right on like the, like, you know, sometimes throw in there, sometimes throw right on that edge. You, you, even though the weed line is only like, <laughs> that's a weed line in a river and it like, you can, ca you can catch them on the edge just like you would at home. It's just this weed line's three feet deep instead of 17. Good one. That's a good That's one. That's a good one. Nice. Frog. Thought he was bigger when he blew up. I thought that was a freaking giant. Dude. Yeah, it looked really I mean, big. I mean, it's still a great fish. Yeah. Is a big small mouth staring at my. Throw my tube at it. Please don't throw your tube at it. You throw my tube at it. I was gonna maybe. Oh no, I just didn't eat it. He was plenty enough, big enough to eat a frog. Like, it's not big. I got him. I don't feel like he's gonna be ready to. Yeah! Good one. Boom! There you go. Boom! All right, 2.30 update. We are uh, just about ready to done finish locking back up to four. Georgia's got three pretty decent fish. I've got five pretty good ones. I probably got like 13, 14 pounds. So hoping to get like a four pound bite and make this thing interesting. So hope that happens. Nice. Dude, there you go. Right as you said that. Yeah. I was like, heck? my line heavy? <laughs> <laughs> Dude! Shout out to Pete! Thank you, Pete Hare. Now, we got about 15 minutes left to fish. We're close to the way in. Let's see if we can get lucky and catch a big one, and George can fill his limit. Much better day two. 
waiting for the final stands we'll talk about it the bone vixen reaction invasion vixen was the deal for me this tournament what cost me is choosing to go up to the lake and gambling on that i should have just fished my five fish and i think i could have made the top 10 but this thing was dominant today also caught fish on bone colored yellow magic popper flipping uh, pit boss and honest pro frog i'll put links in the descriptions below all these baits but if you fish smallmouth anywhere especially on rivers you need these two baits and i will put links down below you see my co's and partners were throwing similar colored top waters uh, from different brands and they just didn't get bit. I'll check back in, final standings, but I'm pretty sure I didn't make the top 10, but a much better day to do and a lot more fun. And that's fishing. Wrapping things up here. Final standings, I took like 18th or 19th, had uh, 26 pounds and change. It actually took almost 30 pounds to make the top 10. That is way more than I anticipated. I thought it would be 26 to 27 pounds. And people caught them. The river showed out. Uh, the bite was good. Uh, it really came down to bad decision making the first day. Uh, I decided to use my boat draw to go up to one spot on the lake. That spot didn't go. And I kind of put myself behind the eight ball, uh, leaving me trying to chase 11, 12 pounds on the lake uh, without spending much time practicing there. Day two, I went to my primary water caught almost 15 pounds if i could have done that two days in a row i would have been right where i needed to be but that's tournament fishing that's decision making hope you guys enjoyed the video we're actually rigging up we got a derby tomorrow some more content coming make sure you subscribe hit that bell notification button so you don't miss the next tournament video we should catch some pretty big ones michael and i are pretty excited about this tournament we did a little pre-practice uh and it should be good if you guys want to continue to catch more big bass and suck less make sure you catch one of these videos coming up right here